it is crazy how many of these things that he's talking about in this book overlap with what we think is Christians. Yeah. Because he's writing this as an evolutionary biologist, Mm -hmm. at least at the time. And I talk a lot about it with the guy that I'm going over this book with Mm -hmm. is like, he does such a good job of identifying the problem or identifying how things are working, identifying how we see things. Mm -hmm. But we just think that the biggest issue and something to keep your eye out for when I'm going over stuff is he, in our opinion as Christians, he attributes things incorrectly. Yeah. So, for example, one thing is he talks about the hippocampus Mm -hmm. um, being the part that helps us understand the unexplored territory. Sure. And he talks about that being the most ancient part of the brain. Mm -hmm. Um, which would imply like, you know, evolution, obviously. Right. Um, and he doesn't, he takes it as a presupposition and doesn't explain how, or he doesn't show that it was the most ancient part of the brain. Okay. Um, I think it's just in that field, such a common assumption Mm -hmm. that it's not even touched on. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I think, um, and maybe I'm sure there's there's plenty of holes in what I'm about to say that could be poked. Um, but something interesting that comes to mind is just um, how how many things you have to just like presuppose exist in in this understanding that like for example Jordan Peterson created mm-hmm. like he is saying all this great stuff right but the idea is that it derives from not God, you know, it derives from like a logical place, which is just unexplained or it's right. just like generally assumed that this is it. And I think you see that a lot. Mm-hmm. And like culture is like, Oh, well, you know, it, this just, it, there isn't a root. Mm-hmm. It doesn't go all the way back to something. It just is this way. But how could you not just attribute that to God? Right. And I understand people that are like, well, you know, the, the Romans believe that, uh, da, 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 this God was, throwing lightning you know the norse believe that Mm -hmm. thor the god of thunder was causing thunder but i think it in in a society in which we can understand those things on a much more like scientific level i think you ultimately boil down to like there isn't a scientific explanation Mm. so the basic fundamental principle for all these things such as how we interact with each other in our community why do we need to do this? Why does this benefit us? Why is this good? Well, it all comes down to what the Bible is saying. If you read the Bible, it explains it to you. Right. And so I looked something up for your sake um, mm-hmm. and the audience, I suppose. Something that we've talked about is the irreducible complexity argument. Okay. And I'll just read what it says on Google. It's the argument that certain biological systems cannot have evolved by successive small modifications to pre-existing functional systems through natural selection Mm -hmm. because no less complex system would function. Right. So there's some things that are within us that are just so complex Mm -hmm. that, um, and obviously it's a disputed thing, but generally I think I would agree Mm -hmm. that there was no other way for them to function except as they currently are. Yeah. I mean, like if you, even if you look at the human race, you know, there's, if you just pick people from all over the world, there's so many variations right. between like skin color, between height, between like bone structures mm-hmm. and all this different, all these different things. And it, yeah, you could argue it's evolution, but why, why haven't like other people, like why haven't people in Africa who are just generally taller, mm-hmm. why haven't they just evolved to be seven foot? They mm-hmm. can't, it's not within the human body confines. And I, I know there's definitely seven, you know, shack, seven foot plus, you know, but I mean, just generally on average, why aren't they hitting seven, eight feet? And it's just because that's not the abilities of the human body. So I think it's almost ridiculous to assume that, okay, so like our human bodies physically cannot withstand, um, uh, what am I looking for? Like, I think of Andre the giant. Mm-hmm. They can't, they can't take too many changes before they deteriorate into yeah. not being functional. Well, and just not even just changes, but like, especially size, Mm -hmm. you know? So I guess, yeah, changes. And Andre the giant, he really cool guy and stuff, but he didn't live very long, at least not compared to everyone else around Mm -hmm. us. So if you look at other animals and, 
you know, other species and stuff and you look at the evolution. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's things that they shift to and adapt to and stuff. You know, I'm, I mean, look at all the cats we have, lions, jaguars, right. leopards. Well, and there's definitely genetic variation. Yeah, of course. But as far as I understand it, the limit is interspecies. Yeah. One species won't become another mm -hmm. and different species can't breed together. So you can't yeah. breed a cat with a dog. Well, it we we just can't evolve that way. Right. Like we can't evolve to grow wings just because we want to fly. Mm -hmm. Even if we needed to fly, we we built airplanes. You know, we deemed it necessary to fly, mm -hmm. so we built airplanes, and that's something that other animals species can't do. But like a cat's not going to like need to fly so it can eat better and it's going to magically, you know, create wings through right. evolution. It's it's just not. Mm -hmm within the species capabilities so yeah of course like altered dna's and like slight evolutions in regards to like survivability within your uh mm -hmm. um your location on the globe but but it's limited it's limited exactly mm -hmm. well that's a good tangent <laughs> we can get back on <laughs> track with... like... it was such a good tangent jordan peterson <laughs>